Hey, this is Eric from Control Alt Achieve, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to use Google Forms to create questions for sequencing or ordering. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Google Forms, uh, it's a great tool for creating uh, assessments and quizzes for students. However, we do have some limitations in the types of questions we can use. So if I were to come in here um, to create a Google Form and look at the question types that are available, you'll see we've got things like short answer and paragraph multiple choice, check boxes, drop down. We've got a scale and a grid, date and time. And this is fantastic. However, it turns out that there's a lot of options that aren't available. Uh, folks familiar with uh, more modern assessments that our students are seeing, some of the high stakes uh, state tests like park and air and so forth, uh, they have more tech enhanced question types like drag and drop and clicking on hotspots and uh, putting things in order or, or sequencing items. Now, Google Forms does not support those yet. Hopefully, someday it will. Uh, but what we're going to talk about in this particular uh, video is sort of a workaround, a creative way to use the features that are in Google Forms to mimic a sequencing or ordering type of uh, quiz question. So let's try that out. So for our example here today, uh, now you could do this with just about any topic. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the growth of a frog, uh, but obviously this would work for just about anything, putting historical events in order, putting the panels of a comic strip in order so they tell the story in the right uh, sequence, um, could be you know steps in a scientific process. In this case, we'll do one for uh, the growth of a frog. Um, so there's our title. Throw that in as normal. A um, couple of things we're going to do, just housekeeping kind of things, nothing fancy at the moment. We're going to go up to our gear button up here, let's just like we normally would, and we're going to turn this into a quiz. So we're going to click on the quizzes tab and say make this a quiz. Now, of course, you can adjust all these settings whichever way you prefer. For this example, though, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it into a quiz so at least we have that much turned on. Okay, so up to this point, nothing too different yet. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our question. Well, actually, we're going to create our questions plural because the way this works is we're going to have to make one question for each possible um, item in the sequencing problem we're working on. So it's not going to be a single question, it's actually going to be multiple questions where each one is its own item that's getting sequenced. Now because of that, you're going to want to think about where you want to put your directions for this because you can't really put the directions with any one of the questions since there'll be multiple questions that are part of the problem. So basically what you could do is a couple of things. You could come here to the form description and you could just paste your directions in there. That would work perfectly fine. Another option if you want is you can come over here to the floating toolbar and you can insert another title and description. And if you do that, you could put your directions there and perhaps for the title of that section, actually just call it directions. So you could have your own directions section. That would be fine. All right, so my directions are telling them below you're going to see items in a random order. Uh, please correct or select the correct uh, positions for second, third, fourth, and so forth to put them in the right order. In this case, from youngest to oldest because we're doing frog growth. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll start with our first item that we're going to do, and that is going to be uh, the frog eggs because a frog is going to start off um, in uh, an egg form, and so that'll be our first uh, item that we put here. So for the question, I'm actually putting in the description of the item, frog eggs. Now the type of question we're going to go with, I'm going to suggest drop down just because it will save a lot of space when it comes time for the kids to take the quiz rather than having all of this listed out. The drop down kind of compacts things because what we're going to put down below here are the possible orders. Now I'm going to do four stages of frog growth. So frog eggs could be first or they could be second or they could be third or they could be fourth. Those are the four possibilities uh, for what frog eggs could be. So I've got my frog eggs description. I've got the four possible positions that they could be in the cycle. Uh, it is a drop down. Um, I do want to set the correct answer here. So I'm going to click on answer key and frog eggs are the first. So we'll select first and we'll just make that worth one point so that we have that set. Now, 
Something else you might want to consider here before we leave this first question is you may want to put in an image to go along with this. Um, that would make a lot of sense for this one because I can probably grab some pictures of frog eggs. Now, sometimes that's not going to make sense. Maybe you're having students put in proper sequence the sentences of a paragraph. Well, then it's just text. That makes perfect sense. But other times you may want to include an image as well. Now, in the past, that would have been a bit of a problem because Google Forms used to have images separate from the question. And we're going to end up randomizing this in a little bit, and that would create a little bit of havoc because the pictures and the questions wouldn't be connected. Well, now the images are part of the questions. So to the right of frog eggs, I'll click on the uh, image icon here to insert an image. And I'm just going to run a Google search, and we'll just search for frog eggs. And we should have no problem finding some frog eggs in the Google search results. And we'll just go with the first one. That's fine. And drop that in. All right, so that's our first item that's getting sorted is uh, frog eggs. Now, we've got three more um, stages that we need to do for the frog's life. To save yourself a little bit of time, my suggestion, we'll make that required, my suggestion would be to duplicate your first question rather than recreating this on every single one of them. That'll save you a little bit of time putting in the possible positions there. So let's go ahead and we'll just hit the duplicate button and we'll move on to our second stage which is going to be tadpole. So this will be the tadpole stage. Uh, we'll change the image because now we need a tadpole. So we'll search for a tadpole. And we'll just grab him. He looks good. It's a group of tadpoles there. Now we don't have to change anything else. First, second, third is great, except for this is now the second in the sequence. So for the answer key, we will quickly switch second to the right answer and uncheck first. All right, keep on going. Duplicate that. And our next phase for frog growth is froglet. So for this next one, we'll do froglet. We will search for an image of a froglet. And let's see what looks like. Well, that first one looks pretty good. I like him. We'll just grab him. He's good. And we'll come down here to the answer key and change this to the third of four in order. And we got one left. So finally come on down and duplicate this one more time. And now we need an adult frog. So we'll have our last one be, he's all full grown. Let's change this to an adult frog. And of course you could upload your own pictures as well. I'm just doing a Google search because that's nice and quick, but you could just simply upload your own images uh, just as easily. And uh, again, we want to change the uh, answer for this one. The adult frog will be fourth in line there. And there we go. So there is our quiz. We've got frog eggs with uh, first being the answer. We have tadpoles with second being the answer. We have froglets with third being the answer. And we have adult frog with fourth being the answer. Now, I'm putting these in order because for me, it's easy. I mean, I think you should too. I mean, keep them in order as you're setting up the answer key. It makes it really simple because it's not going to be in order for your students. What we're going to do now is we're going to use a feature built into Google Forms, which allows us to shuffle the questions. So now that we've built the quiz, we're going to head up to the gear once again, give a click on the gear in the top right. And this time we're going to choose the presentation tab, the middle tab there. And we're going to choose the second option down, shuffle question order and save that. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because this way, every time a student takes this quiz, they will get these four items, frog eggs, tadpole, froglet, and adult frog in a random order. They'll get randomly shuffled around and they will be choosing first, second, third, or fourth based upon the order that they're in to put them in the right order. Let's try it out and see what that looks like. All right, so let's go to the view button here so we can preview this. And here we go. So frog growth directions, put them in order. We've got tadpole, adult frog, froglet, and frog eggs. Again, randomly rearranged. So for tadpole, I have to think, okay, let's see. We've got eggs, that should be first, then the tadpole, then the froglet, then the frog. So let me see, tadpole, that would be second. Adult frog should be the fourth item. Froglet should be the third, and frog eggs should be the first. 
And now when I hit submit, it'll grade that for me. I can click view my score and see that I got four out of four on that. Fantastic, I put them in the proper order. Now, if you needed to do more than one set of ordering in here, you certainly could. You could put in another set after this. The only thing you're going to definitely want to make sure you do is you're going to want to put a page break in between each of them because we're turning on the shuffling feature, which shuffles these around. That's how we're getting all of these randomly arranged each time. Well, the problem is if I just add another question below here, whatever I put is going to get pulled randomly up into the frog one. So let's say I do another one on the stages of photosynthesis. Okay. Well, what you're going to want to do is go to your, your last question in the frog cycle. And over here in the floating toolbar, you want to add a section. If you click this button here, it looks like an equal sign. It's actually add a section. That'll create a new page, and you could just keep working from there. Make your second set of um, sorting or, or sequencing uh, items on that page. That way, when Google does randomly rearrange things, it does it within each page. It won't take things from page two and put them on page one. It will randomly do each page. So you could have multiples of these, no problem at all. You can have as many of them in there as you want. Just make sure you throw a page break in between each one of them. So again, it's not really quite the same as what you're probably going to see on some of the more modern assessments where maybe a student is actually dragging and dropping things into the proper order. But it does use some nice built-in tools that Google has for us, the ability to put images inside of the question, as well as the ability to randomize the order of those questions. Uh, so try that out. See how that works. Gives you another option to give your students uh, some creative assessments. If you'd like some more information on this and get some real uh, nitty-gritty details on exactly how that was done, uh, head on over to my website at controlaltachieve.com. If you go specifically to controlaltachieve.com slash sequence, that will be the blog post that has this video but has also all of the directions uh, spelled out in detail. While you're there, definitely check out the rest of the blog. Lots of great uh, posts there. Try to put up a couple each week. Also check out the uh, resource tab where you're going to find uh, lots of resources organized by topic and by content area. And there's also a webinars tab where you'll find um, recorded video trainings I've done on a number of topics as well. And finally, there's a newsletter tab where you can sign up for a uh, monthly uh, email newsletter with all of the latest and greatest from Control Alt Achieve. Thanks so much. Take care.